The Galactic Council had always been a powerful body, a coalition of representatives from countless species spread across the galaxy. It was formed to ensure the peace, stability, and cooperation of all alien civilizations. Over millennia, they had overseen many interactions between species, making sure that encounters with lesser-known planets and species were handled carefully and responsibly. However, Earth presented a unique challenge. The humans were advancing at an unprecedented rate, and their technology was growing exponentially. The Council had been observing humanity for centuries, intrigued by their rapid technological progress but concerned about their unpredictable nature. Earth, with its young restless species, had long been seen as a potential threat to the balance of the galaxy. A message was sent out, a warning from the Galactic Council to all the species of the galaxy humans are dangerous. Their potential is both limitless and chaotic. Approach with caution. But to their dismay, the message fell on deaf ears. Many species, especially those with less advanced technology, believed the humans to be insignificant. The Yaimar delegation arrived in secret, slipping through the Earth's atmosphere without detection. They landed in a remote location, far from the eyes of the world's governments, but close enough to make contact. Their ship was invisible to Earth's radar systems, cloaked in a technology far beyond anything humanity had developed. But as they prepared to make their move, they realized that Earth's defenses were already evolving faster than they had anticipated. The humans were aware of their presence, and they were prepared to respond. The Weimar had underestimated the speed at which humanity could adapt. The humans' curiosity, combined with their fierce determination to protect their planet, had given rise to an unexpected strength. Within days of the Weimar's arrival, Earth's military forces had mobilized. While the humans had not yet developed the technology to counter the Yaimar's advanced cloaking methods, they had created their own radar systems capable of detecting the faintest of disturbances. The Yaimar were no longer operating in the shadows, and they were under observation, and the humans were preparing for their next move. Their rapid advancement was seen as a mere phase, something that would burn out eventually. Others believed that the humans could be easily manipulated, given their lack of understanding of the broader cosmic order. Some saw them as an opportunity for trade or exploration, eager to take advantage of Earth's resources and their potential. But one species, the Yaimar, knew better. The Weimar were ancient and wise, their civilization dating back to times long before humanity's emergence. They had seen what could happen when a species like humanity was underestimated. They had made that mistake once before, with a race that had risen quickly, only to destroy itself in its reckless pursuit of power. The Weimar had watched as that species' ambition led to their downfall, their technologies spiraling out of control and tearing their society apart. The memory of that event had haunted the Weimar for centuries, and they were determined not to make the same mistake again. They understood the humans' potential all too well while humanity was still young, their thirst for knowledge and advancement was boundless. The Wa the knew that given the right circumstances, humans could become a serious threat to galactic peace. But despite their concerns, most of the Galactic Council dismissed the Yaimar's warnings. Let them be many said. On the surface of Earth, the world held its breath. News outlets were filled with speculation about the sudden uptick in strange occurrences. Was it alien contact? Were the Yaimar the first visitors from another world? The people of Earth were divided. Some saw the Weimar as a potential ally, a race that could help humanity navigate the stars. Others feared them, seeing them as a potential threat, a race that had already made it clear that they were watching humanity closely. Governments, in secret, were making plans for both diplomacy and defense. They could not afford to underestimate the Yaimar, but they also could not risk alienating a species that might hold the key to humanity's survival in the vast cosmos. The Yaimar, now aware of humanity's readiness, began to make their presence known. They reached out to Earth's leaders, offering a message of peace, but the tension was palpable. Humanity was no longer the innocent, naive species it had once been. They had grown, and with that growth had come a deep desire for control. The question now was not whether Earth would welcome the Weimar, but whether they could coexist at all. The Weimar had warned the Galactic Council, but it was clear that humanity had already begun to chart its own course. A new chapter in the galaxy was beginning, and the Yaimar could only watch as humanity stepped boldly into the unknown. They are a young race, still struggling with their own survival. 
They will not be a problem, they believed the Yaimar's caution was a product of ancient fears, and their own arrogance led them to ignore the advice of the oldest, most experienced race in the galaxy. The Weimar delegation, now in direct communication with Earth's leaders, found themselves facing a new set of challenges. They had expected some level of resistance, but the humans' response was unlike anything they had anticipated. The Earth's governments, wary of the alien presence, demanded proof of the Yaimar's intentions. They weren't easily swayed by flowery words or promises of peaceful cooperation. Humanity had learned from its past mistakes, having witnessed how easy it was to fall victim to deceit and manipulation, both from their own kind and others. The Yaimar's quiet arrival had only raised more questions. To the humans, these aliens were no different than the many threats they had faced in their history unwelcome, potentially dangerous, and untrustworthy until proven otherwise. The Weimar, however, were not the kind to take such things lightly. They were patient, but also determined. They watched humanity's progress from afar, monitoring their space exploration efforts and their sudden surge in technological advancements. The humans had begun to explore space, sending machines to distant planets, and their understanding of the universe was expanding at an alarming rate. What troubled the Weimar the most was the human propensity for conflict. Unlike many other peaceful species, humanity had a history of fighting among themselves, even with all the potential for cooperation and progress. Wars, disputes and rivalries were part of their history, and the Weimar saw this as a dangerous sign. If humanity could not even resolve conflicts within their own species, what would happen when they encountered others? The potential for chaos was immense. The Yaimar knew that humanity's rapid growth, combined with their inability to manage their own instincts for conflict, could result in an uncontrollable force. So they made the difficult decision to intervene, but subtly. The Weimar didn't want to destroy humanity or wipe them out, they simply wanted to send a message. They would try to communicate with Earth's leaders, warn them of the dangers ahead, and offer guidance. But the humans were not so easily swayed. The Weimar delegation, composed of just three members, had anticipated some level of skepticism, but not to this extent. They were used to the wisdom of their ancient civilization being respected, and yet, here they were, standing before a race of beings that seemed willing to question everything. Earth's leaders, however, were not the only ones to be wary. The people themselves, through social media and underground networks, had begun to piece together information from the alien interference, and some factions were already mobilizing in fear. Secret groups of extremists started to form, individuals convinced that the Yaimar had come not to offer guidance, but to conquer, to subjugate humanity to their will. Conspiracy theories spread like wildfire, and soon, the seeds of distrust were planted deeply into the collective consciousness of Earth. By the time the Y made their move, humanity had already begun to notice strange occurrences. Their advancements had attracted the attention of the galaxy in ways they couldn't fully comprehend. While many humans were still in the early stages of interplanetary exploration, their technological breakthroughs were already catching the eyes of alien species. The Yaimar had been watching their every move, and now, the humans were starting to notice. Unexplained fluctuations in communication systems began to appear, and strange data patterns started to emerge. At first, these anomalies were brushed off as technical glitches or coincidence, but as they became more frequent, Earth's best minds began to investigate. The humans, ever curious, had begun to notice the same patterns that the Weimar had been using to monitor them. They weren't sure who or what was behind it, but they could tell something was amiss. They had become aware of the growing presence in their communications and had begun to study the interference. They didn't know it, but they were already beginning to pick up on the signals the Yaimar had intended to remain hidden. The Yaimar had underestimated humanity's capacity for curiosity and adaptability. The Yaimar's attempts to communicate openly through diplomatic channels only made things worse. Humanity's fear led to more secrecy, more resistance. World leaders were divided. Some believed in peaceful cooperation, seeing the Yaimar as a potential ally that could accelerate Earth's technological progress. Others, particularly in the military sectors, viewed the Yaimar as a threat, believing that any perceived weakness would be exploited. The debates within the governments intensified, with some nations calling for immediate action, while others pushed for patience and dialogue. Earth's technological advancements, fueled by decades of innovation, now seemed like both a blessing and a curse. 
On one hand, humans were more capable than ever of achieving greatness, but on the other hand, they were now fully aware of the threats that loomed beyond their small blue planet. The balance was delicate, and it seemed to teeter closer to the edge with every passing day. As the interference grew, so did the humans' desire to understand it. Scientists, engineers and researchers across Earth started working together, pooling their knowledge to decipher the strange anomalies. The Weimar had assumed that humans, still new to space exploration, wouldn't be able to detect their signals. But what the Weimar failed to consider was humanity's unique ability to adapt and learn. The more the humans studied the data, the closer they came to unravelling the mystery. Earth's best minds, working with limited resources, had developed countermeasures to trace the source of the interference. In secret labs and hidden facilities, humanity's brightest minds were making discoveries that were far beyond the scope of what the Yaimar had anticipated. It wasn't just that the humans were discovering the interference, it was that they were developing their own methods to shield themselves from it. They were beginning to create technology that could potentially counteract even the most advanced forms of alien manipulation. The WA, realizing the gravity of the situation, made the decision to offer a demonstration of their capabilities. They would show the humans their technology, not to intimidate, but to reassure them that they came in peace. It was a risky move, one that could easily backfire if the humans misinterpreted their actions. But there was no turning back now. The Yaimar believed that showing their advanced technology would foster understanding. They offered to reveal their cloaking technology, their propulsion systems, and even their communication methods, all with the goal of illustrating that they were not invaders, but explorers. They wanted the humans to see that they, too, had once been a species on the brink of discovery, struggling with the same fears and uncertainties that humanity was now facing. But again, the humans' response was mixed. Some were awed by the Yaimar's advancements, marvelling at their sophisticated technology and the sheer scale of their knowledge. They recognized the potential benefits of cooperation, envisioning a future where Earth could join the intergalactic community, contributing to and learning from civilizations far older and wiser. These optimists were eager to work together, hopeful that humanity's place in the galaxy could be secured through peaceful collaboration. But others, particularly those in power, saw the demonstration as an opportunity to assert control. The humans were not simply impressed they were calculating, while some believed the Weimar had peaceful intentions, others saw the demonstration as proof that the Weimar were far more advanced, and thus far more dangerous. They feared that humanity, despite its progress, would be rendered irrelevant in the face of such overwhelming power. Governments began to prepare for the possibility that the Weimar might not be as benevolent as they claimed, while the military initiated secret operations to safeguard Earth's future. The Weimar had hoped to send a subtle warning, but instead the humans were actively fighting back. The race had begun, and the Yaimar realized that the humans might be more prepared for galactic interaction than they had first thought. It was during one of these covert operations that the Yaimar's true challenge became apparent. A small faction of humans, feeling threatened by the presence of the aliens, launched a counter-offensive against the Yaimar delegation. They believed that if the Yaimar were truly peaceful, they would have no problem demonstrating their vulnerability. These humans, now armed with their own advanced technologies developed in secret, attacked the Weimar's diplomatic vessel in an effort to force a confrontation. It was a dramatic escalation. The Weimar were caught off guard, having only intended to make peaceful contact, but now they had to act quickly to defend themselves. The attack on their vessel, though unsuccessful, demonstrated to the Weimar the full extent of humanity's resolve. Earth was not simply a fledgling race in the universe, it was a species capable of defiance, capable of challenging the unknown, even when faced with overwhelming odds. The Yaimar were no longer just observers, they were participants in a game they hadn't expected to play. Their initial plan had been simple, they would send a message, make contact, and warn humanity of the dangers that lay ahead. But the situation was escalating faster than they could manage. The humans were not only aware of the interference, they were actively searching for the source, decoding the signals, and developing technology to counter it. The Yaimar had assumed that they would have time to make their presence known, to warn the humans without causing a confrontation. But now, it was clear that humanity was not going to simply sit back and wait. They were taking matters into their own hands, and the Yaimar could only watch as the humans prepared for the unknown.
What had started as a simple warning had now become a race to control the future. The Wa, who had once been the most powerful and wise race in the galaxy, found themselves caught off guard by humanity's rapid progress, and as the battle for the future of the galaxy unfolded, the Galactic Council remained divided, unsure of how to proceed. As the humans advanced further, the Weimar realized they had underestimated the sheer resourcefulness of Earth's inhabitants. What had once been a simple interference in their communication systems had spiraled into a full-scale investigation. The humans, driven by their insatiable curiosity and their need to understand the unknown, were starting to piece together the puzzle. They had not only detected the anomalies, but they were developing methods to track the source. The interference, which had once seemed like an innocent glitch, now seemed like a deliberate attempt to communicate with them. A sense of urgency filled the air as Earth's governments mobilized their brightest minds to decode and counteract the alien presence. The Weimar's plan to warn humanity had quickly turned into a race against time. While they had once hoped for a diplomatic solution, they now found themselves on the defensive. The humans were too clever, too quick to adapt. They were no longer simply reacting to the interference, they were actively searching for the ones responsible. The Weimar, forced into a defensive position, quickly recalculated their approach. They had come to Earth hoping to guide the humans toward a peaceful future, but now they realized that humanity's strength lay not only in its potential for growth, but in its ability to confront threats head-on. The attack had shaken the Weimar's confidence. It was clear now that humanity could not be easily swayed by promises of peace. They were willing to fight for their survival, and that was a trait the Weimar had not fully anticipated. Across Earth, the pressure mounted. Scientists worked in secret facilities, digging deeper into the alien signals, attempting to reverse-engineer the technology behind the communication. Military leaders, aware of the potential threat, began to develop their own strategies for defense, preparing for the worst-case scenario. The growing tension began to ripple throughout society. People began to whisper about the possibility of alien contact, some eager for the opportunity, others filled with dread. Governments scrambled to control the flow of information, but the cat was already out of the bag. The truth was out there, and humanity had already begun to comprehend that they were not alone in the universe. As the Yaimar regrouped and the situation grew tenser, the Galactic Council took notice. They had been monitoring the situation from afar, but now they were forced to intervene. The warning they had given to the galaxy about humanity had never been so urgent. The Council understood the risks of an unchecked Earth, but they also saw the potential. The balance of power was shifting, and it was no longer just about diplomacy, it was about survival. As the Council debated what action to take, the Weimar knew that they would have to face not only the humans, but also their own past decisions. They had warned the galaxy about the danger of humanity, but in doing so they had underestimated what the humans could accomplish. Now, it was clear humanity was ready to shape its own destiny, and nothing, not even the most advanced civilizations in the galaxy, could stop it. The game had changed, and no one, not even the Weimar, knew where it would lead. On the Yaimar homeworld, a council of their own was convened. The situation had escalated beyond their control. Their initial goal had been to send a subtle warning, a message to Earth to deter them from rushing headfirst into the unknown. But as the Yaimar watched the humans' response unfold, they realized their own tactics had failed. They had assumed that the humans would be passive, that their curiosity would lead them to seek knowledge without realizing the potential dangers of their own rapid development. But now it was clear humanity was not like other species. They were driven by a desire to conquer, to push boundaries and to explore, no matter the cost. The Aymar knew they needed to act quickly, but they were divided. Some members of their council still believed that direct intervention could cause more harm than good, that humanity needed to be allowed to develop on their own, even if it meant taking risks. Others argued that humanity's rapid ascent posed an existential threat to the galaxy itself. The debate raged on as the situation worsened. The Galactic Council's intervention came swiftly, but it was not what the Yaimar had expected. Instead of offering a decisive plan of action, the Council's representatives proposed a meeting a direct dialogue between Earth's leaders and the most influential galactic species. This was an unprecedented move, a gamble that could either end in peace or chaos. The Yaimar, still shaken by humanity's boldness, agreed to participate. 
As they prepared for this high-stakes encounter, the realization struck them the humans had achieved something no other species had ever managed to do. They had forced the galaxy's most powerful council to rethink its approach to interstellar relations. Meanwhile, on Earth, something unexpected happened. Humanity's response to the alien interference became more sophisticated by the day. Their best engineers, fueled by a mix of fear and fascination, had begun to create countermeasures devices that could neutralize the alien signals and protect Earth from any further intrusion. The humans were not just preparing for communication, they were preparing for war. They had already begun to build their own fleet of spacecraft, not just for exploration, but for defense. The once small, isolated nations of Earth had begun to cooperate in a way they never had before, united by the realization that their future was no longer entirely in their own hands. Humanity was standing on the edge of something monumental. On Earth, the world watched with bated breath as leaders from all corners of the globe came together for a live broadcast of the historic meeting. Humanity had faced countless challenges, but this was the greatest one yet standing at the crossroads of becoming part of something far larger than themselves. As the Yaimar representatives and human leaders exchanged words, a sense of mutual understanding slowly began to form. And then, with a simple phrase that would forever change the galaxy's view of humanity, the Earth's president looked directly at the Weimar and said, We will make our own path, but we welcome your guidance if you truly want to help. As the humans worked on their countermeasures, the Yaimar's decision became clear. They could no longer remain hidden in the shadows. They had to confront the humans directly, but they knew they had to do so carefully. A full-scale invasion would be disastrous. The humans were unpredictable, yes, but they were also capable of incredible ingenuity and resilience. The Yaimar had learned that much already. Instead, they decided to send a delegation, a group of representatives who would communicate directly with Earth's leaders. But the Weimar were not naive. They knew the humans would not simply accept their presence without suspicion. They had to be careful, calculating and precise. The delegation would have to be small, just a few individuals capable of interacting with humans without drawing too much attention. For the first time, the Weimar understood humanity wasn't just a threat, it was the future.